Hey guys, welcome to the series on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. In this video, we'll discuss the advanced features of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. For the other videos, I have linked the playlist in the description box with all the other videos related to MDE. So what are advanced features in MDE? So if you log into the Defender portal, that is security.microsoft.com, and in the main menu, scroll down to almost to the bottom, you get settings, go to settings, and then select endpoints. Here you can see advanced features. Let me minimize this menu. So in these advanced features, there are many features that you can enable. These are just toggle buttons, and we will talk about all of these today. So if I scroll up, the first one is restrict correlation to within scoped device groups. Device groups are mainly used to streamline security operations, okay? So with these device groups, you can organize your devices based on many attributes, like for example, domains, computer names, or the tags that you give to your devices. And just so you know that device groups are available under settings in the same endpoints. If you go to device groups, you can create your device group here. Okay. Add device group and then you can do this. There'll be a separate video to explain this. So I'm going to link that in the description box. I'm going to cancel this for now and go back to advanced features. So this is telling you that it will restrict correlation to within scoped device groups if you turn this on. So let's say that your organization has multiple departments and these multiple departments have their own security operations center that is SOC. SOC's responsibility is to monitor and respond to security alerts. So there is one organization but many departments and each department is handled by a separate security operations team. In this scenario, you can use restrict correlation to within scoped device groups you can turn it on because this setting will allow each local SOC team to limit alert correlations only to the device groups that they have access to. So say there is an incident involving many alerts from many different devices across different groups in the organization. If you turn this setting on, then it ensures that each local SOC can focus only on the alerts within their scope. This will also allow them to take appropriate actions based on their access to the devices involved. If you turn the setting on, suppose say there is a global SOC team which has access to all the device groups, then that SOC team will see multiple separate incidents incidents categorized by device groups instead of just one consolidated incident. And this could potentially lead to increased workload and complexities if you have only one SOC team. Okay, let's go to the next setting. The next setting is to enable EDR in block mode. So this recommendation is mainly for devices that are utilizing non-Microsoft antivirus solution. So you have a non-Microsoft antivirus solution as your primary antivirus and then there is Microsoft Defender antivirus that is operating in passive mode. So enabling EDR in block mode provides additional protection against malicious artifacts. So what exactly is EDR in block mode? This is a feature that enhances security by actively blocking malicious artifacts, especially when Microsoft Defender antivirus is not the primary antivirus product and is running passively. So there is your antivirus which will attempt to identify malicious activity first. If it is missed by the antivirus, then it goes to the EDR detection. And if it is missed by the EDR detection as well, EDR and block mode takes action. EDR and block mode operates in the background. It is for remediating malicious artifacts detected by EDR capabilities. So it ensures that the potential threats that are overlooked by the primary antivirus solution are addressed by this. Something to also note is that EDR and block mode has limitations when Microsoft Defender antivirus is in passive mode. Some functionalities like real-time protection and certain security features like network protection and attack surface reduction rules are only available when Microsoft Defender antivirus is actively running. So you can turn this button on to enable EDR and block mode. So once you go ahead and enable this, 
and then say there is a malicious artifact that is detected and remediated by this then what happens your SOC team will see these detections as blocked or prevented in the action center so where is action center if you go back to the main menu and go to actions and submissions click on action center here you will get that detection saying it is blocked or prevented let's go to the next advanced setting I'm going back to settings, then endpoints, advanced features. Let me minimize this again. Next one is automatically resolve alerts. If the automated investigations or analysis says that there is no threats found or remediated, then such alerts will be resolved automatically if you turn this on. By the way, this is a default on for tenants created on or after uh, Windows 10. And if you don't want to have alerts auto resolved, then you will have to manually turn off this feature. Something you need to remember is that this auto resolve action can impact the a device risk level calculation. So device risk level calculation is based on the active alerts de detected on a device. And also if an analyst manually sets an alert status to in progress or resolve, the auto resolve capability will not override it. The next feature is allow or block file. For this, there are two prerequisites. First one is that Microsoft Defender antivirus should be the active uh, anti-malware solution. And second, that the cloud-based protection feature should be enabled. What is this cloud-based protection? So go to your start button, search for virus and threat protection, open that. Here go to manage settings and then you can see that there is an option called cloud delivered protection. This should be on for allow or block file to work. So if you can see here, it says that if cloud delivered protection is on, it provides increased and faster protection with access to the latest protection data in the cloud. So these two features should be on for allow or block file to work. This setting allows you to block potentially malicious files within your network. That is preventing them from being accessed, that is read, written or executed on devices within your organization. Once you enable this allow or block file, you can block files through the add indicator tab on a files profile page or in the same settings endpoints if you scroll down under rules indicators you can add files hash value to block it. Let's go back to advanced features. The next one is hide potential duplicate device records. If you enable this feature, it makes sure that you access the most precise device information by hiding potential duplicate device records. So various factors can lead to duplicate records such as redundant device discovery scans or recent onboarding or offboarding activities. This function functionality identifies duplicate devices based on their host name and last seen time and hides them from portal pages like device inventory and Microsoft Defender vulnerability management. But you should remember that the duplicates will still remain visible in global search, advanced hunting, alerts page and incidents page. This is by default set to on, but if you want to retain that visibility of potential duplicate device records, you can manually deactivate this, okay? The next setting is custom network indicators. So this feature will enable you to generate indicators for IP addresses, domains, or URLs. You can decide whether they will be permitted or blocked based on your personalized indicator list, okay? So that uh, indicator list, like I showed you before, is under rules, indicators, if you go, you have IP addresses and URLs and domains. So if I go back to advanced features and scroll do down to that custom indicators, it clearly says to use this features, devices must be running Windows 10 version 1709 or later. And they should also have network network protection in block mode and this version 4.18 something or later of the anti-malware platform. 
Let's go to the next setting that is tamper protection. Tamper protection is a feature in MDE that will protect certain security settings from being disabled or changed. In certain cyber attacks, right, malicious actors attempt to deactivate security measures like antivirus protection on your devices. This is usually done to gain easier access to your data, install malware or exploit your data, identity and devices. And tamper protection helps guard against these types of activities. When tamper protection is turned on, there are some tamper protected settings that cannot be changed. Like virus and threat protection remains enabled, real-time protection remains turned on, behavior monitoring uh, remains turned on, antivirus protection remains enabled, cloud protection remains enabled, security intelligence updates occur, automatic actions are taken on detected threats, notifications are visible in the uh, Windows security app on Windows device, archived files are scanned, and exclusions cannot be added or modified. But even if tamper protection is uh, turned on, users can still view their security settings and it doesn't affect the registration of non-Microsoft antivirus apps with the Windows security app. The next setting is show user details. If you enable this feature, you can access user details that is stored in Microsoft Entra ID that is Active Azure Active Directory. You can access users' picture, name, title, and department information when investigating user account entities. You can view user account information in the alert queue and as well as device details page. Next setting is Skype for business integration. It gives you the ability to communicate with users that are using Skype for business or email or phone. This is usually used when you want to communicate with the user and mitigate risk. So whenever a device is being isolated from the network, so you see some risk and you decide to isolate that device from the network. So let me go to one of the devices first. I'm going to go to this device. So the device page opens. Click on these three dots, more actions. You can see isolate device. So if you click on isolate device, this will show you this action will isolate the device from the network, but it will remain connected to the Microsoft Defender for endpoint service. But then there is a checkbox where you can say allow Outlook teams and Skype for business communication while device is isolated. So if you turn on that advanced feature that we just talked about, even if the device is isolated, it will allow the user to continue communication via Skype for Business. Let me close this and go back to Settings, Endpoints, Advanced Features. Let me minimize this main menu. So if I scroll down, the Skype for Business integration is specifically for communication when device is isolated. The next setting is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. So what is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps? This is a feature that offers comprehensive protection for SaaS applications. It ensures security of your cloud app data. It gives you CASP functionality like shadow IT discovery, visibility into cloud app usage, protection against app-based threats across the cloud, and assessments for information protection and compliance. So if you activate this feature, then it allows MDE, that is Defender for Endpoint Signals, to be forwarded to Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. And this in turn enhances visibility into cloud application usage. So the forwarded data undergoes storage and processing in the same location as your Defender for Cloud Apps data. So it facilitates comprehensive monitoring and analysis. You can also see that it gives them the ability to block unauthorized applications when the custom network indicators setting is turned on. Let's go to the next setting that is web content filtering. So if you enable this feature, you can block access to websites containing undesirable content. And you can also monitor web activity across all domains. You can customize these policies to specify the categories of web content you wish to block. So on the same page, if I scroll down under rules, there is web content filtering. Here you can create the policies. So if I want to add a policy web content policy let me say test and then go to next you can select what you want to block okay it says select the web content categories to 
block there are different categories like adult content i can block like gambling or i can select all to block all adult content and then if i scroll down there is high bandwidth download sites are blocked or i can select all again and you can also block legal liability uh, content like hacking illegal drugs and then there is leisure mostly entertainment like you know games social networking all this can be blocked you can also block park domains or newly registered domains as well i'm going to cancel this and go back to advanced features the next setting is unified audit log so audit log is used for investigating specific activities across microsoft 365 services including microsoft defender xtr and mde actions so activities like changes to data retention settings changes to advanced features creation of indicators of compromise isolation of devices adding editing deleting any security roles creating or editing custom detection rules assigning user to an incident all these are the activities that can be audited so to access this audit log you need to either have view only audit logs role or audit logs role that is set in exchange online so by default these are assigned to the compliance management and organization management role groups so if you turn the setting on that is unified audit log whenever there is an audited activity that is performed by a user or admin an audit record is generated and stored in the office 365 audit log so if you go to the main menu and scroll down there should be an audit tab if you go to the audit tab you can see the audit logs you can search it has custom criteria here and then you can also look at audit retention policies you can set up a retention policy here let me go back to advanced features settings endpoints advanced features so we understood what is unified audit log a uh, button the next one is device discovery there is an entire chapter on device discovery so i'm not going to explain this here i will link it in the description box the next setting is download quarantined files let me minimize the main menu so if you enable this feature the files that are quarantined by microsoft defender antivirus or by your security team will be securely saved according to your sample submission configuration what is the sample submission setting so if you again go to your start button and search for virus and threat protection remember we discussed cloud delivered protection along with this there is sample submission as well so there are many different options available for this like you can set to send safe samples automatically send all samples automatically or do not send any samples the samples are sent to microsoft by the way let me close this so if you turn this feature on that is download quarantined files the quarantined files will be securely saved and your security team can easily download these files from the files detail page from the defender portal so enabling this setting facilitates rapid investigation of potentially malicious files enhancing incident response capabilities while minimizing risk the next setting is live response if you turn this on this will give access to your security team to access a device using a remote shell connection there is a ch separate chapter on this so i'm not going to explain more on live response here let's go to the next one so there is a separate one for live response for servers and there is one more for live response unsigned script execution this will allow you to run unsigned scripts in a live response session the next setting is share endpoint alerts with microsoft compliance center so microsoft compliance center is this page which is on compliance.microsoft.com like you can see this is your home page for managing compliance needs using integrated solutions to help protect sensitive information manage data life cycles reduce insider risks safeguard personal data and more this focuses on the compliance posture of your organization so here you can find insider risk management so if i click on it this is the page i have not said this up so it is telling me you can do this there is data life cycle management information protection you can create labels 
label policies there'll be a separate video on compliance portal i'm not going to explain it more here just understand this is the portal this is the home page for you to focus on compliance and if you enable this the endpoint security alerts and their triad status will be forwarded to the microsoft compliance portal and this will enable enhanced insider risk management policies so this integration allows organizations to identify and remediate internal risks before they escalate so if you configure security policy violation indicators in the insider risk management settings that i showed you before that is if you scroll down in the main menu of compliance portal if you set up the policy here security uh, policy violation indicators and then you turn this setting on then the defender for endpoint alerts are shared with insider risk management for relevant users the next setting is microsoft intune connection so this will facilitate an integration between defender for endpoint and microsoft intune to use this feature you will have to enable integration on both intune as well as defender for endpoint once you enable this you will be able to share defender for endpoint device information with intune this is for enhanced policy enforcement and i show all of these steps when i am actually onboarding devices to mde via intune i will link that as well in the description box so microsoft intune is a cloud based endpoint management solution so with intune you can manage user access to resources also it simplifies app and device management across your many devices that is including mobile devices desktop computers virtual endpoints the next option is authenticated telemetry that is if you keep authenticated telemetry turned on it will prevent spoofing telemetry into your dashboard that is it prevents spoofing telemetry into defender for endpoint the next setting is preview features if you turn this on it will help you discover new features in the defender for endpoint preview release and also test upcoming functionalities by enabling the preview experience this will just allow you to gain access to advanced features before they are officially launched and contribute feedback to enhance the overall user experience that is about preview free features and that's it guys these are all the settings that is available in the advanced features of microsoft defender for endpoint or microsoft defender xtr please leave in the comment section if you have any questions or if you want me to make a video on any other feature or tool thank you so much for watching if this video helped you a little bit please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos i will see you again soon until then bye bye